So let's read. And it says this, the council members were astonished as as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men. What kind of man were they? They were ordinary, nothing special, nothing added, just normal people that were living their life, ordinary men who had never had religious training. Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. We have to think about that. The effect, the effect that Jesus had on them just by spending time with them. Standing there with them was the uh, healed man and uh, there was nothing further they could say. You guys could please take your seat and as you take your seat just say hey to the person next to you. Hey, 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 come on. I like that. So I'm going to be honest with you this morning. I was stressing out this entire week. I was stressing out because I don't necessarily preach that much. I don't get to come up here that much. And when I do, I always stress out about it because I overthink it. I, I'm saying, uh, will they understand me? I was actually talking with Pastor Wendy yesterday, and she was uh, asking me, what do you think are you going to be preaching? And I said, I have a, I have a plan, but one of my, my worries is this. I am uh, my my first language is Spanish. So automatically my brain plays a trick on me and it all of a sudden throws Spanish words when an English word supposed to be uh, spoken out of my mouth. And so all of a sudden I was telling her, you know what? I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be, I feel confident, but that Spanish words might pop out all of a sudden. And so I'm just going to give you a little disclaimer. If all of a sudden I find myself really in it and I'm just talking and I start speaking in Spanish, just give me grace. I'll realize it eventually. I'll, bu- I'll just jump back to English and I'll just repeat myself and let the Holy Ghost flow. So I just want to give you that little, little disclaimer there. Before I, I start really digging into this scripture, I want to I really thank Pastor Benny and Pastor Wendy for allowing me to be up here and, and really sharing with you. I have a, a really cool perspective. At least I think it's really cool. I guess it's up to you to judge. Uh, perspective of the privilege that it is to be up here. I have been in this church uh, going on 14 years, uh, and I've been able to navigate through a lot of seasons with our pastors. Uh, they're not just people to me. They're not just uh, the people we see on the weekend, and don't I don't see them during the week. I actually see them pretty much every day of the week in different ways, shapes, and form. And I've been able to really navigate through some of the really high highs where we celebrate together, and we just uh, we, we high-five each other, and it's like, yes, we're doing this. But I have also been here for the very low lows where uh, it, just, it, it just seemed that it was going to be very hard to continue on. And so when they tell me, Ivan, you're going to preach, I feel like this is a holy place. And I really take it as an honor and a privilege because this, this means, the fact that I'm up here, it means that they didn't give up. It means that when stuff got really, 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 really hard, they didn't give up. They kept on going. And it was because the, the, the prize that was set before them. They saw the call. They saw what God was doing in their lives. And they said, we need to keep on going. And so I really want to honor them. I really want to thank them for that privilege. And, and just let them know that in my heart, I, I, I don't take this for granted. The second person uh, I really want to thank is, is my wife. Because first of all, she's thinking incredible. Because I, I, I'm going to go into the little story of how I met her really quick. I'm not going to go into it too much. But she is the woman literally of my dreams. She is a woman that I, I, before I even met her, God gave me a vision of who she was and showed her to me in, in dreams and like visions, almost like, like a picture that I saw her. Uh, and so when I first met her, I was too much of a chicken to actually go up to her and talk to her. It was in a mission trip. I said, no, I need to focus in. I, I'm in the mission field. I, I'm like, I need to do what God's calling me to do. And that was just all excuses for me not to go talk to the pretty girl that that I thought was attractive. Now, two years later after that, 
I haven't talked to her. I haven't spoken to her or anything like that. She reaches out to me and says, I'm going to Vegas. She she goes and sends me a DM. If you guys uh, know what that is, she like slid into my DM and she's like, hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Vegas and I want to go check out your church. I'm like, sure you do. You just want to talk to me. But but the, actually, no, I, I, I really thought I was giving her all the information. I was giving her the website. I was giving everything. And then she kept, she kept on talking with me. And, and, and that first time we spoke, we spoke for like six hours. Pretty crazy. The second time we spoke, we spoke for like another four or five hours, something like that. But this was the crazy part and why I think she's amazing. The second time we spoke, and again, it's all DMs, it's all Facebook, I told her I was going to marry her. A lot of people would freak out about it, like that person that said, what? <laughs> of course. But this is the reality. I had seen her. God had revealed her to me. And, and, and not in a creepy way, but like really, it was like I knew who she was. And the funny part is when I said, you know what? I really feel like you're going you're gonna to be the woman I marry. She said, oh, I know from the first time I saw you, you were the person I knew I was going to marry. And so that's why she's so amazing. That's why she's awesome. And that's why I want to thank you. Now we have uh, four amazing kids. We have 14-year-old uh, Michelle. She's amazing. She's like a Zen master. She's like always calm, super sweet. We have a six-year-old. His name is Rocco. He's, uh, he's very smart. He's always talking about dinosaurs and, and these random dinosaurs that he makes up. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know what kind of dinosaur you're talking about. But it's cool. He's very into, into like... He wants to be a paleontologist and all this stuff. And then we have our two younger ones, which is Leon and Emma. They are legitimately uh, incredible. When we first had Leon, we realized that he wasn't like everybody else. He wasn't like the other two. The other two were calm, were always just sweet. They were always just focused. They're just like, okay, no, don't do that. Okay. Well, this one is a little different. This one is just as sweet, but also extremely, uh, what, what's the word that I could use? Um, yes, I don't know what that means, gregarious, uh, but I, I'm just going to use that. He's, he's that word. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm just going to go with it. You guys are helping me out. Why not? I'm the guy that speaks Spanish and tries to speak English, so I'm just going to go flow with it. Uh, but he's, he knows who he is, and he doesn't take anything he doesn't want to do. So you ask him to do something, and most of the times it's yes, yes, but as soon as you ask him to do something he doesn't want, he's like, no, no. And we thought that was going to be it. Now we're realizing that our two youngest ones are exactly the same. And they're both the spice of life. They're both the, 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 the thing that brings really uh, incredible joy to our lives, but also uh, allows us to learn that, that we are uh, still learning how to be good parents. And, and they're going to keep on teaching us for the rest of our lives how to be phenomenal parents. And so I want to thank them. All right, I said everything I think I, I, I felt I needed to say. Now let's get into the scripture and let's start talking a little bit about Jesus. I'm going to go over this again in, in Acts 4.13. It says, the council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men. They were just ordinary men. This, this popped out at me so much. Because for the longest time, if you are a Christ follower, and this, this message applies to you as a Christ follower or somebody that's in here and maybe seeking to know kind of what this Jesus thing is all about. This message that God has given us is for every single one of us. And it's for ordinary people, not extraordinary people that don't, that have incredible abilities, that, that are completely filled with, with different skills and, and, and have it all together. This message is good news to you and for me. Because this really encapsulates absolutely every single one of us where we have lived an ordinary life 
And by ordinary, I mean we've gone through difficult moments. We've had hard times in our life. We've, we've not had the perfect family. We've not had the perfect financial situation. We've, we've had some difficult moments. We still qualify to, do, to be part of this calling that God has placed in our life. And as ordinary men who had never had religious training, they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by stand, spending time with them. What takes an ordinary person and makes him extraordinary is Jesus. It's simple. It's not overcomplicating it. It's not adding so much to it that it makes it hard for you to believe that you could be extraordinary. It's simple. It's by spending time with Jesus. Spending time in his presence. How do you spend time with him? You worship. Now, right now, you might be in the place where you don't understand what worship is. But simply, worship is a stop in our day saying, God, you have our focus. God, you have my, my focus right now. My workplace is going crazy. Things are going uh, haywire. But the reality is this, Lord. You have my focus now. Uh, this is something that, 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 that really hits home for me. Go, seeing that an ordinary person could spend time with Jesus and they become extraordinary. Because when I was young, and I'm going to go into this little story when I accepted Jesus, I was 14 years old. I was young. The reason I accepted Jesus, and, and, and I'll be a transparent with you and, and kind of put all the, the, the things that were going through my mind that season, it was right after the 9-11 uh, attacks. I didn't really know much about Jesus. And all of a sudden, uh, with the atmosphere that was created after those, that, the, the, that horrible event, uh, I felt very overwhelmed. All of a sudden, it was 9-11 attacks, then there was the anthrax, and there was all this stuff, and I was a 14-year-old kid, completely overwhelmed by what was going on in the world. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time by myself, because my mom, my mom was a single mom, and so she had to work a lot, and I would be at home, watch news for hours and hours and hours, and completely be terrified of what was going on around me. And so, there was one moment where being terrified and being completely scared, I started going to church. I accepted Jesus. I, I started building a relationship with Jesus. And then there was an encounter that I had in my house that really uh, terrified me, but also allowed me to understand that I have a powerful God with me. So I'll explain that. During that season, again, I was terrified. I was very scared of what was going on around me. But I let that fear so creep into my heart that it became dread. It became this, this level of fear that really paralyzed me, scared me. And at night, I would have the hardest time sleeping simply because that dread would come. And I would feel completely overwhelmed by what was going on. But there was one night where I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to uh, fight against that dread, fight against that spirit, that thing that was trying to come against me. And so as I lay down, I started worshiping. And I started singing a, a Spanish song that now that I he think about it, it, it really talks about like being like uh, thirsty and being like lost in the desert. It was a pretty depressing song. And, and I don't know if you guys have experienced that, that like some Christian songs are like, oh gosh, is this supposed to be building me up or is this like putting me in the hole over here? But I didn't know any other song. I just accepted Jesus. I started singing and, and it was literally the song talks about uh, being like a dying bird in the floor kind of thing. It's weird. Uh, if you guys speak Spanish, it's Jesus Adrián Romero, uh, Sediento. Uh, and, and it's like, it was really strange, but yet, my focus was in, on Christ. Yeah. That specific night, there was something else going on. And it was, it was a spiritual attack. In my room, I felt that there was something going on. Like there was a, a presence that wasn't from God. And it was like extra dose of dread over me kind of thing. And as I was just starting to sing, I said, God, I'm just ordinary. I'm just, I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to exalt you. 
Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that you are with me and you are for me. Thank you. And I started just worshiping and thanking him. Something changed. I was, uh, I was under the covers for sure because I was terrified and thinking that, 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 that the blankets were going were gonna to protect me. And again, this is like 14 years old I, or 15 years old. I wasn't like a, a little, little kid, but uh, still I thought the, the covers would protect me. Uh, and then I feel like somebody sits down on my bed and I feel the pressure on my thigh. Scary. Scary stuff. Freaked me out a little bit. But what immediately happened after I felt that pressure on my, on my leg, I felt incredible peace. I pulled my, my, the blanket down, look over to my side, and if you want to discuss the, theo the theology behind it, uh, go ahead. You could say it's not true, but it's just an experience I, I had. I turned, and I literally saw a, what I consider an angel standing in front of my bed. And so what I saw is, is a massive, massive uh, angel with two swords. And as all of a sudden, there was, there was something else in my room. But as that thing started coming close, he had two swords. He would open up like this and then like get like a, like a fighting stance and face forward. When I saw that, I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is, this is freaky. But what happened immediately afterwards, I fell asleep. I just fell asleep. I was comfortable. I was good. Yeah, that's kind of wh where I was. I woke up the next morning, and I remembered what happened, but I said, oh, it was probably like, like, like I was dreaming or, or not real. And then what ended up happening is my mom and, and, and my dad at that moment, we all went Costco shopping and did whatever. We, did, we had our day. And then when we were coming back, the way our, our house was laid out was as soon as you walk into the front door, there's the stairs uh, going up. So my mom went in first, and as soon as she walked in and we had all our stuff, like any Costco uh, uh, shopper, like I have all the boxes, my dad has all the boxes, my mom has nothing. She's like, you guys take care of it. So she walks uh, in front of us, and she stops right in front of the stairs, looks up. She stays there for like an extra like, like, like five seconds. And you know when, like you normally just look up and you're like, whatever. She, stay, she stood there, looked up, and then kept on going. And I saw her do that. And so I asked her about it. And she's like, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. We had dinner. We had all, all like a dinner conversation, whatever. And then my dad and I went walking. What was really cool was as my dad and I were walking, I told him the story of what happened last night. And I'm thinking that it was all a dream. And he said, you know what? It's really interesting because your mom didn't want to tell you because we know you're a scary cat and you get scared of everything. And I'm like, eh, it sounds right. It sounds right. It's cool. Uh, it, it is what it is. That's me. Uh, and she said, as soon as we walked back from Costco and, and she walked into the house, she looked up and she saw an angel on top uh, of the stairs right by your room. And I said, hey, that's the one that was in, 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 in my room while this thing was going on. And it was such an incredible thing that an ordinary kid that doesn't really know what to do, what to say, how to rebuke spirits, how to, how to do things that you think everybody, uh, everybody else can do, had an encounter. I had an encounter where all of a sudden God became real. He wasn't just a name that you hear. It wasn't just a thing out there. It was personal. It was real. It became something that impacted my life, marked my life, and changed me. It made me realize I'm never alone. I'm never walking in life just by myself thinking that, that everything is dependent on me. It allowed me to understand that, you know what? We do have a God that is almighty, all-powerful, that in your situation, wherever you find yourself in at this moment, he is with you and he is for you. And he's not just a God that, 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 can change things. He will change things. As we spend more time with God, as we spend more time with Jesus, we understand that he, he is there working on our behalf. That literally the creator of heaven and earth, the, the God that created everything, is literally planning on ways to bless you, 
on ways to open up new doors for you, on ways to add to yourself. That was one of my biggest struggles as I, as I walk my Christian life is I always thought I had to be completely different than who I am. I had to preach different. I have to talk different. I have to be different. I need to think different. I have to be a completely different person. God has corrected me on that. God is not asking you to be a person that you don't recognize yourself. God's not asking you to become this other creation that he didn't create. He's calling you to be who he made you to be. And in that, you will see his grace, his mercy, and he will add to you what you need every single day. That's why we need to spend time with Jesus. Because if we all of a sudden come to our own conclusions... We navigate this life and we say, you know what? I can't do this, this, or this simply because I don't have the, the personality for it. I don't have this for it. We will be living under a lie that God is truly trying to break us out because he will add to us all the things we need to fulfill the call that he has placed in our life. As, as we read this scripture, we're talking about Paul, uh, Peter and John. Now, Peter and John, John a little less, but Peter was pretty messed up. <laughs> he was pretty jacked up. He's a guy that denied Jesus three times. He's a guy that, that pretty much went in and, and cut a guy's ear off. He's a guy that, that, that would just react. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we find him just a, a, a book later, in Acts, after the, the day of Pentecost, we found that he was filled with the Spirit. He was empowered. He was forgiven for rejecting Jesus or denying Jesus. And we find him in front of all these people that are ready to judge him and say, you know what? We don't want you to be preaching this Jesus. What you're preaching is not is, is, is rocking the boat too much. It's, it's making our believers uh, uh, get nervous Stuff will happen if you continue preaching about Jesus. We, we will make you pay for it. So we find ourselves in the story where they are brought into this courtroom, if we want to we put it that way, and they're asked, what's going on? Why do you keep on preaching about this Jesus? And at that moment, the Holy Spirit takes over. This ordinary man, and he starts preaching and sharing what God, the Holy Spirit, is doing and what his plan is. We will all be put in certain situations where we will truly have to depend on the Holy Spirit to give us the right words. Last night, as I, everybody left, and uh, I stayed here in the worship center, I, I made the excuse that I was trying to fix some of these monitors and whatever, and so I let everybody leave, and only the custodial staff was here, and I came up here, and I was like, I'm going to practice my preaching. I shouldn't have done that. That freaked me out. I came in here, and I'm like, okay, you need to do the W. You need to walk back, walk forward, and then walk back, and then come over here. Make sure you see everybody, and then you go to the center. And then, and then I'm like, whatever. I was, I was trying to do my thing. I'm like, well, Jesus, and then W, 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 come on, and walk, forward, walk back, and not too much, and then, then a stance. And, and, and what ended up happening, it freaked me out. I called my wife and she said, you want to FaceTime me? I'll see you. I'm like, no, you don't want to see this. No, thank you. You don't want to see any of this at all. And so I left and I jumped into my car and I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to make a fool out of myself. I'm like, okay, God, you can redeem, you can restore, you know. It's like if I make a fool out of myself, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll just navigate through that. But what ended up happening really last night is God reminded me of this. This is what I was preaching. I, it hasn't changed. He reminded me, Ivan, who did I call? Who, 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 who's supposed to be up here? Is it supposed to be the version you think should be up there? Or is it just you with, with your mistakes or with, with all the stuff you do good, whatever? And, and I don't say that for, for me too. Like, Oh, gosh, like, look at me. I'm trying to do this. Look at how, how awesome I am. But the reality is this. In all our lives, we always have opportunities 
to grow, we always have opportunities to challenge ourselves. And sometimes the fear of just being ordinary keeps us back. And we say, no, that's not for me. That's for Pastor Benny. That's for Pastor Wendy. That's for this person. That's for that person in your workplace that's always killing it. No, it's for us. It's for us because now we have a relationship with Jesus. We have a relationship with the Holy Spirit where he is with us every single day and he is for us. So when we are completely overwhelmed, we could say, Holy Spirit, I am lost and I look like a fool. Please help me. Please take me by the hand because this is one of those moments where I can't come up with something good to say. I can't come up with a solution for this. Can you take over? And he will. I have a, a, a scripture I want to share with you. And it's found in Acts 2, 17, 19. It says like this. This is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody. And cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions. And your old men will experience dreams from God. This Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. I will reveal startling signs and wonders in the sky above and mighty miracles on the earth below. God has called us to not only live ordinary lives, but to truly allow him to be added into our lives and live extraordinary lives. Truly be in that place where we understand and we're conscious of God's presence in our everyday life. The goal of, of my sermon tonight is very simple. It's for every single person that's in this place to walk out and understand that the Holy Spirit is with you, that the Holy Spirit is for you, and for those reasons, there's nothing impossible in your life. Uh, I know that this was uh, revealed to me, and I, I'm just going to go into, I'm going to try to cram this story and make it really short. A few years back, as I was part of the youth ministry, and I kind of just helped with, with the youth, uh, there was a kid here that had a really uh, horrible encounter. He, he, he had a really bad uh, life and, and, and there was a lot of things that happened to him and they weren't their fault. It wasn't his fault, but it, they still occurred. So it brought a lot of oppression over his life. It brought a lot of things that, that he couldn't really overcome. And, and one of the youth nights, uh, he, he had a, a really weird encounter where he, he lost his vision and he was physically being oppressed by, by a spirit or by, by something where he, he was seeing something different than what was actually happening. It was almost like he was in an out-of-body experience. So uh, they, in those situations, what normally happens in youth group is they, they call Ivan and they say, just go, go deal with it. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I get the demon kid, okay? So it, 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 it's fine. So we all of a sudden go over and I start praying for him. And, and he, he's seeing something completely different than what's actually happening. And, and you can see the terror in his eyes. You can see the terror in, in, in just his body language. It was, it was terrifying. Um, and so at that point, we kept on praying, and for some reason, it stopped. And we're like, great, it's awesome. So he comes, and I used to be a student at one of the interns here, and so we had a stu uh, student house. And he said, Ivan, can, can we, I just go, go spend the night over there? Because I'm terrified that this will happen again while, while I'm by myself. And I said, I asked the guys, I'm like, can he come over and just like crash in the, in the, in the couch? And they're like, yeah, well, that's, that's fine, that's cool. So he came over. And everything was cool. Everything was great. And we all fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, I just start hearing like somebody's like almost like gagging or somebody's being choked. It's, it was it was really terrifying sound. So I get up. I turn on the light. And I look at him. And he's literally not able to like speak or not able to, to talk. Because something is is literally impeding him from, from, from breathing. 
At that moment, I'm just like, Jesus, name. I just start doing what I know what to do. I, I grab my Bible, and I'm like, I want to throw the Bible in his face, and it's just like, here, be free, be free, Bible. i like, you know, you, you use the tools you have. It's a sword, it says. Uh, so I'm just like, ah, it's right there. Come on. <laughs> and so it got very serious very quick. It all of a sudden became this, God, do I believe what you say? Or do or don't I like like wh wh where am I? And so I grab him and I start praying for him. And five minutes passed, twenty minutes passed, and by this point he's he's breathing, but he is completely in a different world. I, I would I, I don't want to creep you guys out, but it's just it's just what happened. Uh, we could go into the theology of it later, but it's just I'm just explaining what actually took place. And the guy is like talking this things that aren't there and, and just random things. It was very, very, very scary. And then it got to a point where it was 20, 30 minutes later and he's still going through that. And I'm like, God, I know you're with me. I know you're with him. Stop this. You have empowered us. You have empowered me and him to really have the enemy be under, under our feet. And then as I start praying that, something was happening in him where he was tripping out and he was moving and he was like kicking and doing all these random things. And then it just stopped. It legitimately just stopped like, like, like he was in a car crash. Like everything stopped. And he looked up and it went from a terrified like voice to a very calm voice, and, and he said, wow, you're defeated. You're actually, like, defeated already. You could go now. Bye. And, and literally, he snapped back into him, just normal him. And at this point, I was, like, crying, and I was just kind of, like, crying out to God. And when he came back, he said, I even, like, I could hear you pray. But I couldn't, I, it was like, it was so far away. This thing was, had so much of my focus. This thing had so much of my attention. This thing was, was invading me so much that it was like literally, I knew I wasn't really wherever I thought I was. But it had so much of my attention that it was hard to distract myself from it. It was hard to actually know who I was until somebody showed up, touched me in my shoulder, and it reminded me, oh, I've defeated this already. And everything broke for him. So I say that story simply to encourage you with this. Let's understand the authority we have. Let's understand that the Holy Spirit has empowered us so we can walk and establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We are not the ones that are timid and scared and think that the enemy or the circumstances are going to destroy us. We're the ones that walk tall, walk into rooms, walk into circumstances, walk into situations, and we establish God's peace and God's reign in that place. Amen.